Well, welcome to part two, where I'm going to start showing you how to create this custom MIDI environment device. And I'll show you how to build the volume fader, the solo button, and the sliders for our filter here, the high pass and the low pass, which is controlling our channel EQ. And in the last video, I'll show you how to create the bandpass filter control with the transformer object. All right, so let's talk about this environment device that we are going to create in this video. All right, I'm going to go here. I'm going to expand the environment view a bit. I'm going to right click in the environment layer and I'm going to unselect protect positions and hide cables. And I'm going to uncheck frameless floating window just to kind of give us a little bit more room to see what we're dealing with. So as we take a little bit closer look at this, you can see that we are actually on an environment layer. And I can go to any other environment layer, click some ports. Some of these you're probably familiar with, Mixer. So I just called this simple fader and button. And here's our other layer that I was showing you earlier, this faders laptop layer. And if I click on a environment object like one of the faders or the buttons you can see over here that the inspector opens up which will give you the info on those objects and some of the objects I also have in this layer um, don't need to be seen so I can kind of keep them in the background transformer monitor so on and so forth alright so let's get started recreating this first thing I want to do is just make sure I have an audio track um, designated and for this reference track and I'm going to label it reference. Then I want to create a new layer in the environment. I'm going to go in and I'm going to label it fader and button 2. And first object I want to create probably is the volume fader. So let's create that. I'm going to go into the menu. I'm going to go to new and fader. And let's choose vertical 3 here for starters. Then I want to label it, let's label it ref, REF for reference. And I'm going to go option, option click on this little output flag here. And I'm going to choose Mixer, Audio, and I'm going to choose Reference. So now this fader is now cabled to my reference track. OK, so as you're doing this, if you're not seeing this left hand column open, which is your inspector, you're going to want to just press I and that will open up. And again, that just shows you all the editable information for whatever you have selected here in your environment layer. So again, here's this fader. It's selected, and it's going to give me all the pertinent information for it. So it's a style is vertical 3. And I'm going to change that to vertical 1. And it basically gives me a number, which is going to be a little more helpful. The output is control data, which is good. The MIDI channel is 1, which is fine. And the MIDI control continuous controller number is 7 which is volume. So whenever I create a fader or a knob, it's going to default to MIDI, MIDI control or continuous controller 7, which, which obviously for this purpose is what we want. So I'm not going to change that. And here are our input controls. So if I, if I want a, like an uh, external MIDI controller, like a, a knob or a fader on my keyboard to control this, then I can set that information here. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to look at this range parameter. So what this range is, is telling me is it's telling me that it's giving me the full 0 to 127 range within the MIDI spec. So within MIDI, everything's 0 to 127. So volume, quietest is 0, loudest is 127. Um, within pitch, you'll find 0 to 127 if you got pitch bend. If you have panning, everything is 0 to 127. So what I have to do is I have to translate this to decibels for this my fader over here. So as I can see, 0 on this virtual fader will, you know, obviously take this fader all the way down as well to minus infinity. If I take the virtual fader all the way up to 127, what it does is it takes my actual fader to plus 6 dB. And I never really want to have my reference track be that hot. I'd only ever want to have my reference track be at 0 dB or, or unity gain. So it's easier for me then to, rather than trying to find 90 here on this virtual fader with my mouse, which is a pain, I'm just going to set the range to end at 90. 
So I can move all this the fader all the way to the top now, to 90, and it'll take it to 0 dB. All right, next thing I'm going to create my solo button. So I'm going to go back into the menu into New, Fader. That's where Logic keeps the buttons as well. So I'm going to go to Button. I'm going to maybe just put it right underneath my fader. And I'm going to relabel it. Let's just call it Solo. I'm going to assign it to the reference track. So back into Mixer, Audio, Reference. And just check my settings here. Output control, that's going to work for this. Channel 1, that's fine. Oh, OK. This I need to change. So basically what I need to do now is I need to go into my mixer, and I need to figure out what kind of settings I need here in my inspector that are going to make this solo turn off and on. OK, so to do this, I'm going to want to go into my layers list. I'm going to go to the mixer layer. I'm going to find my reference track. So here is the environment object for my reference track, just basic channel strip. And I'm going to go into menu, new, monitor. And I'm going to cable the output of my reference track to the monitor. So what the monitor object does is it shows you what type of MIDI information any type of environment object or even a physical physical controller is spitting out. So if I move the volume, it's going to show me that volume information. If I move the pan, it's going to show me the pan information. So one would be the, the, the channel. Ten here is the continuous controller number. And, and here is the value of that. So if I click here in the monitor, it will erase what's in there. So now I want to find what solo is giving me. So channel 1, continuous controller 3, and a value of 1 for on and 0 for off. OK, so now I can go back and change those settings. So instead of 7, now here, again, if I press, press that, it's going to move the volume. So I'm going to change this to 3. And the range I'm going to make from 0 to 1. So now let's see if this works. All right. Looks good. All right, so now I'm going to create the fader objects for our high pass, band pass, and low pass. I'm going to go to New again, Fader. And I'm going to choose Vertical 3. And now I can resize these if I want to, just by clicking on this bottom right-hand corner and opening that up. And I'm going to call this HP for high pass. And instead of going up into the menu, I can easily just copy and paste this. So Option, click, and drag. And let's say I did something like that. I didn't like the way it looked. It looked a little bit out of place. I can select those three, go to Options, Clean Up, Align Objects. So that's a nice feature. All right, so I've relabeled our faders to High Pass, Low Pass, Band Pass. And I'm going to go back to that Mixer Environment layer. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the Solo button and using the Monitor. So I'm going to open up the Channel EQ, and I'm going to, I'm going to try to find out what type of data the high pass and low pass filters are spitting out. So I'm going to start here with the high pass filter. And I'm using 48 dB per octave. And this is the parameter that I want to modulate. So it's the cutoff frequency. So as I move this, OK, so I can see that it's giving me a MIDI channel of 3 rather than 1. So I think the way that Logic, do Logic does this is that they use MIDI channel 1 for the channel strip. And I think they also use it for any type of software instrument I would have on a uh, software instrument. And they're just basically then going from top to bottom on um, plug-in inserts. So here we're at plug-in insert 2 from the top, which corresponds to MIDI channel 3. 
Now it's also giving me a data of one. Now this is actually fader data, so I'm going to have to change it to fader data in my inspector instead of control data. And then it's giving me a value of 0 to 127. All right, so before I leave this page, I'm going to see what the low pass filter is giving me. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to adjust the, the cutoff frequency. And it's giving me MIDI channel 3. And it's giving me a fader data of 29. All right, so 1 and 29 are the two values I need to remember then. So what I did in the interim here is I've assigned the high pass and low pass virtual faders to the reference track. So I did that up here, just like I did with the volume for the reference um, track volume and my solo button here. All right, so I'm going to go and I'm going to make sure the inspector is open. I'm going to choose high pass and I'm going to make the appropriate edits here that I need. So app output type, instead of control, like I said, it's going to be fader. For channel, I'm going to make that channel 3 instead of 1. And then for the number, I'm going to make that 1. Okay, so let's just see if this works. Let's watch the channel EQ over here and see if this works. All right, good. Got that working. Go to low pass. Do the same thing. Fader. Channel 3. See if I can do that with the mouse. Okay. And then 29, I think, was the number, the fader number it was. Let's see if this works. All right, cool. Got that working.